Let's learn how to make this cool carbon fiber technique using completely scalable layer styles. Tip tot. Hello everybody and welcome back to Tip Tart and welcome to this carbon fiber Photoshop tutorial. Today we're going to learn how to recreate this carbon fiber effect which is completely scalable built only using layer styles and pattern brushes um, and can be used on anything text backgrounds whatever. So let's just jump right into it. Let's create our document first of all. I'm going to be creating a new document at 1920 by 1080 pixels and leaving it at 72 um, pixels per inch and RGB color is totally fine. Like I said, this is a scalable effect, but 1920 by 1080 is a good place to start. We will be using masks to create our text shape. So what we actually need to start off with is just a rectangle. So I'm just going to draw a rectangle on our stage and I'm just going to make it the same size as the stage like so. Now, the first effect that we need to apply is bevel and emboss. So we're going to take this rectangle, choose our effects panel down here and just click bevel and emboss, which is quite a classic Photoshop technique, really. Let's just zoom into the edges of our canvas here so we can see a bit more clearly. Now, we want quite a hard chiseled bevel. So we're going to make sure that our chisel is set to hard and that our depth is just cranked all the way up to the top, which will give us really sharp, crispy edges. Direction is up. And for 1920 by 1080, the size you want is around seven pixels for this effect. Now, obviously, if you'd like, you can increase that to create deeper or shallower um, bevels, but I'm going to stick with uh, what I know <laughs> what I know works. Um, now, if you zoom out, you can see this is quite a basic bevel around the edges of our shape here. What we want is a bit more of an interesting pattern that really highlights the edges. So if we change our gloss contour to this sine wave, you'll notice that we get this beautiful little ridge down the edges of all of our bevels. And we also get a much harder edge. This is because, of course, we've increased our depth all the way up to a thousand percent. So that's pretty much all you need. If you want to warm up or cool down, you can change these highlight modes, but that's all we need for the bevel and emboss. However, it's a bit flat at the moment, which isn't really great. What we actually want is to add a little bit of a gradient to the backgrounds as well. So what we'll do is let's just delete all these hidden effects just so we've got the basics of what we have. And we'll just choose effects again, gradient overlay, and make sure this gradient overlay is underneath your bevel and emboss. Take our gradient, double click on here, to open up your color picker and we'll choose something like a very dark blue something like that on the other end of the gradient we'll choose the same blue make it very dark somewhere down there let's darken up this one a little bit as well basically tweak until you've got this nice dark gradient blue like so. Now you can see we're getting a little bit of banding on our gradient here, but that's okay. You can just click this dither option to remove that banding completely. And we are going to want to just either reverse or change the angle of our gradient so that it gets lighter towards the top. And don't worry, because this is all vector, we can come back and change all this later on. So here is our basic shape. We have our beveled edges and we have our gradient overlay. This is what I like to call the background of the effect. Now, we need to duplicate this layer. Control J will do that for you. And we can double click on this effects layer here to bring up the same effects panels. Let's turn everything off. So we go back to our basic shape again and delete all the hidden effects. Now, to create the carbon fiber texture on top, we need to do a few different things. First of all, we want some strokes and some inner shadows to create that nice effect. But first and foremost, what we actually want is to create a pattern overlay. So you can see here, if I go to my effects and I choose pattern overlay, I've actually already created this carbon fiber effect here, which is under my custom um, patterns. But I'm gonna show you how to make this because obviously that's the point of this tutorial. So let's just click cancel. I need a new document, file new. And we'll just make it 32 pixels by 32 pixels because we're going to create a looping pattern. Let's zoom all the way in. Now, grab your rectangle tool. We've already got a gradient fill. But I'm just going to choose this basic gradient fill here and I'm just going to draw myself a rectangle. Let's position this in the top left and we want like a repeating grid for this pattern. OK, so what I'm actually going to do is I know that the full width is 32 pixels. So if I want it repeating four times, it'd be an eight pixel width and we'll make it half the height of our 32 pixel square. So that'll be 16, so eight by 16. Let's then go to our shape tool, double click the fill, bring up the gradient, and we'll create a black to very sort of 
darkish gray, maybe with a touch of blue. And then on the final one, we don't want white. We want something just off white, maybe again with a touch of blue. What this gives us is a nice smooth gradient from black to very dark gray. And then like almost like a ridge highlight, almost like we're faking a bit of a bevel emboss again. Let's just duplicate that again with control plus J and position it underneath. So we now have two on top of each other. Let's do that again, but this time selecting both and control plus J and we'll move them over. Let's select all these layers with shift control plus J. We'll make ourselves a nice grid. Now, holding control will allow you to select individual layers. So I'm going to select this one. Shift will then allow me to select all these others like so. And we're just going to move them up. And we'll move them up until we don't want them up all the way like this because that defeats the point. We'll move them up until they're halfway through. So we're actually moving them up eight pixels like so. Yeah. Control plus J again will duplicate them and you can just bring them down so that they fill the rest of your page. And now we have our looping pattern. OK, which should loop perfectly. Let's go to edit, define pattern and give it a name. Carbon fiber V2. Back in our main composition on our new layer on the top, we'll double click our effects. We'll choose pattern overlay. Uh, sorry, it's just added those back on. So we'll just turn those all off again and delete the hidden effects. Let's choose a uh, pattern overlay and we'll add our carbon fiber pattern on top. So you can see that those are pretty much the same. I'll just choose my first one because I know that works. Now, blending mode overlay is probably the one that you want because if it's blending mode normal, it's not gonna let any of that light view through from our previous layer. You can choose overlay, perhaps soft light instead, depending on the effect that you want. I'm going to choose overlay for now. Uh, the effect that we want for this, the particular settings don't really matter too much. It depends entirely on like the size of your project. I found that 87% works well for this 1920 by 1080 canvas. Now, however, at the moment, this isn't looking too great, right? It's looking kind of flat. Now we can apply some effects on top of this to make it look a little bit nicer. So let's do that. Firstly, we're going to want a stroke around the edge of our text or the edge of our shape. So let's go to our effects panel, choose stroke. And we're going to want a white stroke, first of all. And again, we'll change the blending mode of this. I found again around four pixels uh, width works quite well, but we will change this uh, not to normal blending mode, but instead to hard light, which allows a lot of the white through, but um, not a lot really of anything else. Let's reduce that opacity down to about 35 ish, let's say 34. And you can see here that, that allows if we zoom in some of our just some of our um, bevel and emboss to come back through at the edges there, which is very nice. Let's open up our effects panel once more. And we also want now a couple of inner shadows to make these blends look a little bit better. So let's add our first inner shadow. And this one will be to add some darkness. So we want it on multiply mode, definitely. Let's crank that opacity all the way up though. So it's just basically black. And we don't want any distance. Oops, I just hit enter there, my mistake. Let's open that back up. Um, we don't want any distance, but we do want it to be quite a sort of soft shadow, if that makes sense. So what we'll be doing is about, let's say 43 pixels. Now it's kind of hard to see, but if I turn off the pattern, I turn off the stroke, you can see our inner shadow just around the edges there. Just makes it when it comes to our letter forms later on, it makes that um, creeping in, that kind of curved creeping in effect at the edges. Let's leave those others off whilst we see what's going on here. We can leave the contour as it is because for this shadow, it's quite a smooth contour. If you'd like, you might choose this rounded contour instead just to add a bit more thickness, but I quite like the flat one. Now, what we want now is just a little bit of a sort of highlight ridge on any other aspects of our um, letter forms. So I'm just going to choose inner shadow again, um, making sure that this one is on top. But what we're actually going to do is make this kind of into a glow. So we'll choose white and we'll choose a soft light overlay. And for this one, again, if you start playing around with the distance, you'll see that it basically creates a little highlight around the top. Now, what this means is any horizontal plane in any of our shapes is going to catch that uh, soft light and create a highlight on those ridges. Now, again, you might want to play around with these settings, but for 1920 by 1080, I have found that about 14 pixels distance, so you can see just that little ridge along the top there, nice little bit of highlight light. 
uh, and we want to make it a bit harder. So we'll increase the choke, which basically is like the the hard edge point of your light. So around 11 pixels for that, or 11%, sorry, for that. Uh, and then let's just increase the size just a little bit. So it's just not quite as hard. Let's say around, around 11 pixels should work quite nicely. Let's turn back on our pattern overlay and our stroke, which looks quite nice. And for the hard light stroke, I think I might just reduce it down just a little bit more. Maybe just a touch. Perfect. Okay, great. So now we have our carbon fiber effect and our background creating this like lovely um, kind of shape here. What we want to do now is go to uh, add two things on top. One is a hue and saturation layer, which will just pop on top of everything. And we can use this essentially to adjust all of our properties. If you wanted to make it a little bit green, a little bit pink, it's very subtle, but it is there. Okay. So this will be our adjustment layer, which I'll just reset back to zero. I'll show you what this is like on the original so you can see a bit clearer. So here you can see our carbon fiber is a lot lighter. And if we go inside our smart object from this file here, we have a brightness and contrast and we have a hue saturation on top. And this is just so that you can change it to whatever color you want, essentially. So back in our original document here, we have our hue saturation. We want a brightness and contrast. So we can just increase the brightness decrease the contrast perhaps. And on our hue saturation, we can do tweaking until we're happy. So I'll just cool it off a little bit there. That looks pretty much banging to me. Now we need to group all of these effects and we'll just call this carbon. And to create your shape, you essentially just do something over the top and use that as a mask. So for example, here I create my text layer. I choose the word carbon and I'll just make it massive. You can see this is a uh, custom font. I think I got it from Dafont. It's called Paladins. It's very cool. I like it a lot. Um, let's pop that in the middle of our stage. Now, if we control click our text layer, we can then click our background copy and create a mask. Alt drag that mask onto this layer as well. So we now have these two layers masked out with our text. And if we turn our text off, Bomb, there is our carbon effect. This background's pretty bright though, so I'm just gonna delete that background and we'll create a, oh, excuse me, just rotated the canvas there. We will create a uh, dark gray or black background underneath, like so, okay? Now, obviously you can play around with this to your heart's content um, because all of your effects are still in the layer styles. So for example, if you wanted to adjust this stroke's opacity, to darken up the edges of your carbon, or maybe create a hard white bold edge, etc., all these things completely scalable, completely vector-based, which is fantastic. So there you have it. Nice carbon effect um, for your completely editable layer styles in Photoshop. Uh, you can go to my Gumroad account. The link is in the description. You can download this layer style for free if you don't want to do it yourself. Um, or if you're feeling very generous, you could also uh, donate and pay a little bit for it as well to help keep the channel running, which is great. But uh, it's free if you want it. You don't have to pay anything if you don't want to. Thank you very much, everyone. And I'll see you next time for another episode of Tip Top. Massive thank you to my level two and above members, WN62, Ian Costello, Rob V, Jason Carl Ruddy, MP, D. Mazur, Volifers, Melem Hoover, Two Steps to Chill, Josh Colon, Urzula Fomanska, The Sorcier, Lali Lulelo X, Andrew Hammond, Jenna Kerry, Jarbs Animations, Sergio Degalado, Ralika M, Narain Abdilla, Barbara Resner, Lone Wolf 16, Ira D, Political Psychology, Maybe Sharma, and Cross. You guys are super lovely, and I hope you have a great day. If you'd like to become a member of the Tip Tart Zone and become a Tip Titan yourself, consider clicking that join button below. for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.